Hello and welcome to the GSMA webinar um, here today. Um, my name is Richard Cottrell and I'm the Program Director for Connected Living um, here at the GSMA. And I'd like to welcome you to this webinar um, to talk through um, the developments in, uh, in the GSMA around the Connected Living Program and take you through the priorities of the program over the next financial year and also look into some of the latest market developments that we expect to see happen over the, over the next few, few months. Connected Living is a program here at the GSMA that is very much the response to the huge opportunity that our operators members will see over the next um, ten, so 10 or so years within the IoT and end-to-end -end space. The Connected Living program has been around for around approximately the last three years and it's been previously very much focused on market development within the vertical industries. However, based on the feedback from our operators, we're now starting to see growth and we now start to see a number of challenges that we need to address to enable our mobile operators to enable the scale in this area and develop, on, develop the opportunity that they will have in the future. The focus of the program in the next year will be very much on um, horizontal enablers where we look to develop um, an opportunity for operators to grow their businesses. We have a number of esteemed speakers with us today, and I'd just like to introduce you to Graham Trickies, the head of the Connected Living Program, Sylvia Kashif, uh, analyst for end-to-end -end from GSMI Intelligence, and Andrew Parker, um, uh, a marketing director. We have a very packed agenda, and we hope to run through and provide you with an overview of the Connected Living Program. Um, we'll give you an overview of the latest market intelligence from um, GSMA Intelligence, and then we'll talk about the marketing um, plans that we have around the program in the future. I'd just like to also take this opportunity to, to remind everybody that if you, have any, if you have any questions during this webinar, please do use the web either the um, Twitter handle or the email address that's on, on your screen at the moment. So I'd like to now hand over to Graham Tricky to provide us an overview of the strategy of the program in the next financial year. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Yes, my name is Graham Tricky. I'm the head of the Connected Living Program. So what I want to do is give an overview of the program and give an overview, uh, a little bit of an overview of the background to the market plan. The slide that you see in front of you at the moment gives you some idea of the machine to machine services that are being launched by operators around the world. You will see that this is already a global phenomenon, that operators are around the world are launching services, have already launched services for machine to machine, uh, about 428 mobile operators across 187 countries. Um, by far the most at the moment is in Asia, with 42% of the global connections coming from Asia, followed immediately uh, in Europe by, by about 27%. I think the key here is this is just the beginning. Operators who have been involved in machine to machine for several years have already realized that they can be involved not just as a connectivity provider, but also providing a set of services that are useful for the B2B to C environment that we see with machine to machine. And as we broaden the focus from just machine to machine to more the more generic Internet of Things, I think there is a very big opportunity for operators moving forward in this area. So hopefully we will have watching this webinar not only operators that we know, but operators that are interested or who have just entered into this section of the market, who are also who are perhaps considering entering into this market. So again, if we can be of help and assistance to you in that, then please do contact us after the seminar. So if I move on to the next slide and we look at the overall framework, this is the GSMA Vision 2020 framework. This is based on some extensive interviews <coughs> by our strategy team over the last uh, six months, working with operators around the world to understand what they see needs to happen between now and 2020. So we now as a GSMA have a very strong vision for what we want to achieve as an industry by 2020 and how we will get there. This slide illustrates the four major pillars of the program, of which Connected Living is one of them, starting with personal data on the left, then Connected Living, then digital commerce, and then Network 2020. 
There are similar webinars to these being held by each of the other programs, so if you do want to get interested in any of those programs, there is the opportunity to do so. If we focus on connected living, it's really about connecting the digital and the physical world together. And you see that we have uh, on the slide shown two specific actions. One is to develop uh, a machine sim that can be used to enable the Internet of Things. And the second is to define the requirements going forward, a network for the Internet of Things. So, of course, we're looking at this as a, as a multi-year program. It's not just a single year program and will completely change next year. Uh, we have to be thinking of the longer term. We have to be initiating some activities now. It may take some years to come to fruition. So part of our time for this year is to make sure that we uh, focus on creating a set of network requirements so that we are clear how we need to support in the future. So if I zoom in a little bit more for the next slide on the connected living um, scope for this year, uh, perhaps I should start with the lead operators that are shown at the bottom of the slide here. So we've been working with the Big Orange, AT&T, Deutsche Telekom, China Mobile, China Unicom, uh, Telenor, Entergy Tacoma and Telefonica since around October, November last year to actually scope and define the program. So we've worked with them to understand what they think is required from this program to define the objectives, the high level of objectives, to define the detailed deliverables that need to be in place to support that objective and to confirm their commitment as leading operators to the program to help us. Now we're keen to have other operators. We have a number of other uh, participating operators that have already committed their energies and efforts into the program. So hopefully some of you uh, watching uh, the other side of this camera lens from the webinar uh, are also interested in being active contributors. If you're not and you just want to manage uh, uh, to keep uh, track of what's happening with the program, that's also okay. And at the end of this webinar, I'll explain how you can keep in touch with us. So if we look at the main two specific um, deliverables uh, for the initial scope for this year, the first one is defining the network requirements to make sure that we can cope with the significant increase in the number of connections that will be uh, caused by machine to machine or more generally internet of things. So make sure that we understand how to do that, make sure that we have uh, global deployments that are possible, uh, supporting all the various use cases, and make sure that we are supporting uh, the verticals that uh, are going to need these services. Now we are focused this year a little bit more on the enabling functions than we have done uh, last year, for example, as Richard mentioned, we were focused on some verticals. So we're coming up one level, if you like, when just looking at the uh, key enablers that have to be in place to support all of the different market areas. So one of the key things we've got to do is to define a common set of guidelines uh, for efficient usage of MTM applications. One of the issues that you find right now is that uh, some software in embedded applications may automatically do an update or request an update at a certain fixed time in the day. And obviously if there are hundreds and hundreds or even thousands and thousands of such devices doing the same thing at the same time, we end up with a signal storm and we end up with an overload of the network. So we're trying to write some positive guidelines for application developers um, to make sure they understand how best to use the network in an MTM configuration. Secondly, we also need to have some basic minimum requirements for devices, MTM devices that connect into the network. Uh, obviously, we want to ensure that the network continues to work, so we need some basic testing to make sure that devices uh, are suitable for connecting to the network, and we'll be involved in that also. And as I mentioned before, this is not just a single-year project, so we need to define clearly what the requirements are for networks going forward and to uh, gain agreement from the operators to start implementing those new functionalities and capabilities, which may take some time for them to be fully implemented. Secondly, definition of the machine sim that really allows um, the use cases that we expect to see, indeed already do see for MTM, which require remote provisioning, require the ability um, potentially to install a sim 
maybe it's uh, hermetically sealed in a device in one country and to have it uh, operate in another country around the world. So we have to have this capability of remote provisioning. Uh, the GSMA did a lot of work uh, last year to come up with a set of specifications uh, for uh, remote provisioning. They're done, they're available on the website. If anybody doesn't have them, let us know and we can point you in the right direction to the website. And uh, we're now in the mode of making sure that operators and indeed all the others in the value chain, including the OEM device manufacturers and also the application uh, developers, uh, are able to start implementing this and have plans to implement these solutions. Last but by, by no means least, we also need to make sure that there is a positive view taken by the regulators around the world in terms of taxation or in terms of privacy and security. There are some basic requirements that we will need for end-to-end -end internet of things, but it isn't the same environment as a normal B2C relationship with uh, voice and data going over smartphones. So we need to understand and explain to the various bodies in each country that there are differences and that they therefore should consider this, these types of applications in a different light. Moving on, um, I'm not going to go into this slide in detail, but this is just to show you that we have, for all of the programs, and obviously for Connect and Living, my program, we have a clear set of key performance indicators that are split into two areas. The left-hand column there is the program deliverables that we as the GSMA will uh, facilitate those, uh, the completion of those deliverables with operators and in some cases also with other members, associate members and other people in the value chain. And then on the right hand side we have what's called operator engagement on the slide, but it's really more than just engagement, it's operator implementation. In a way, what we can facilitate in the GSMA is the definition, but the implementation of that definition of whatever the topic is really is down to the operators. So you'll see that there's a list there um, for each of the areas of the program that I've discussed. And um, I think this is the right time for me now to hand over to, to Richard uh, so that he can give you a bit more explanation of how we're going to run this program. Richard. Well, thanks very much, Ian. And um, can you go on to give me a little bit of detail on what the main objectives of the program are so that the um, first phase of the program will be understood? Well, I think it's now job now just to talk to you a little bit more on how this program will be structured and, you know, how do we, what are the real tangible outcomes that we'll expect to see from the program? So now on your screen, I hope you're seeing a, a slide that shows a number of pillars. And those pillars are really the core areas of activity for the program. So we've got um, pillars which are looking at network efficiency and device efficiency. We've got something called future networks, which is very much aimed at looking at the future and how that can be developed. Remote provisioning, which is very much, again, aimed at how do we build on the success of the deployment of the embedded SIM specification, which we saw um, released by the GSMA before Christmas. And then the third area is very much taking this concept of a um, differentiated machine SIM, and how can we look to create a new regulatory environment that would support the development of M2M and IoT services in the future. And on the bottom of that diagram, you'll see that there's an area which is called priority ecosystems, and I'll come on to that in a bit more detail in the next few slides. So we could just move to the next slide, please. So in terms of um, the program itself, you'll see that on the far right-hand side, sorry, left-hand side of your screen, there's an area called network efficiency. And as Graham said, this is very much around ensuring that the, the network is performing in the right way to support the new types of devices that we're going to see coming onto the network over the next 10 to 15 years. The characteristics of, the, of an M2M device is obviously very different from a traditional handset that we have optimized our networks to support over the last 25 plus years. So this area will be very much around trying to develop guidelines and um, policies that we can share with the new kinds of device manufacturers, application providers that will be moving into this M2M space. And of course we want to give some guidance to these new um, providers around how can they easily have their devices um, accepted by networks and deployed on networks around the world. So we'll be developing a set of, a minimum set of um, test criteria that can educate that and then we can communicate through our, our 
GSMA channels and our member operators to these communities to ensure that the devices which we see coming onto the network over the next um, number of years will be fit for purpose and not cause issues on those, <coughs> on those networks. I think we've already, a number of operators have started to see challenges with the devices coming onto their networks. And if you look at the scale of these devices, which are in hundreds of millions, in terms of the scale of the seven billion connections we have today, I'm quite surprised to be seeing such a huge impact of those devices. The second area, um, moving on to future networks, is very much focused around what do we see the capabilities of the future? And what do, we need, what do those need to be for M2M and IoT? Um, when people are talking about M2M at the moment, they're very much considering a, a data, it's a, it's a connectivity play or it's a managed connectivity play. But we very much believe that mobile operators have built a trusted partnership with customers in terms of the full service wrap that they can offer in terms of their propositions to market. So we want to explore through our working groups how we can add new value-added capabilities into, um, uh, into mobile operators' networks to enable them to generate new revenue opportunities from those. The main outcome of the, pro of the, of the work stream will be a roadmap that we'll look to develop into the future. But in the short term, we see some really key challenges. The first one of those is around security. Security um, is, a, is big news in the, in, in the M2M space almost on a daily basis with people being able to hack into pacemakers or people to hack into vehicles. And I've even heard of people hacking into baby monitors. So what we want to do is to find on an industry's behalf a very clear security position that we can educate the industry with. And then we want to explore further how we can build on the very secure capabilities of a mobile network and really bridge that from an end-to-end -end proposition point of view and give mobile operators the possibility of delivering more value within the security capabilities that they have. The second area is billing and charging. Mobile operators and yourselves have got very complex billing systems that man where you manage millions of connections. So how can those be leveraged more in the end-to-end -end space? How can we create innovative new propositions that can not only um, support a B2B model, but also a B2C model or a B2B2C model. So how can we leverage those capabilities? And again, we'll be carrying out a piece of analysis around that working with our mobile operators. And the final area of a deep dive for this, finance, for this pit phase of the program will be looking at how can we expand the, the mobile operators management capabilities within the network. You've all got mobile networks where you manage millions of devices that are cellular based. Is there some way that we can broaden that management capability and, and take that beyond the traditional cellular device, either through a network component or maybe something within the SIM, that can then enable us to manage some of the short range radio devices which we see um, already um, largely deployed within the marketplace. The third area um, is really the uh, an area where we're trying to, to, uh, to take and deploy one of those core operator capabilities and take it to market and create a value opportunity for um, our operator members. So it's remote provisioning and as I mentioned it's very much based on the specification which was approved by um, the membership uh, before Christmas and it will be very much trying to support the rollout of that, that specification. So not only will it be focusing on some of the technology components like the test and certification elements, but we'll look to also do some work around what the value is of this capability to not only mobile operators, but also the wider ecosystems that would be able to take advantage of this capability. The fourth area on the right hand side of the slide is very much focused on regulation and how can we differentiate uh, M2M from the traditional business. I'm sure those of you that are part of an M2M business is very, are very much aware that the characteristics of that business is very different from the traditional handset model that we are used to as mobile operators. We're looking at global deployments. We're looking at small pieces of data, which is highly critical. So we want to try and bring the industry together to build some common positions around a number of the key topics. 
develop the concept of the machine sim and identify if there's any way that we can develop a different uh, dif differential regulatory treatment of those kinds of devices. And then try and address some of the key challenges within the M2M space around permanent roaming, around taxation, and data and privacy when trying to deploy a global service. But we won't forget some of the key barriers that could be in place outside of our own industry. So we'll be trying to look to reactively respond to any regulatory barriers that we might see being developed within adjacent ecosystems. So for example, in automotive, if the regulatory framework around eCall or around SimRav in, in Brazil aren't correct, then there won't be a role for the mobile operator to play. So we're looking to address those kinds of significant challenges that will limit the growth of M2M and IoT in the future. And the final area at the bottom of the slide is very much focused on the ecosystems. As I mentioned, the program has spent the last three years very much looking to do market development within the adjacent ecosystems that mobile operators could look to develop new business from. We don't want to lose that by working on common enablers. So what we're very keen to do is make sure that we can build those relationships with those ecosystems and also use them as a voice of a customer so that we ensure we're developing the product capabilities of the future that the actual adjacent industries need and we understand those needs. And we'll also use that as an opportunity to um, develop our thinking in terms of what the future roadmap should look like. So just moving on to the next slide and talking about that in a bit more detail, we're very much gonna focus within some of the large um, development areas that we're seeing at the moment. We've been very clearly, um, it's been very clearly identified that our lead operators, that automotive and health are huge opportunities that face a number of challenges to, uh, for yourselves to deploy and develop new businesses in. But we won't hopefully stop there. We'll look to expand that into the utility space, into the more commercial transport space, and also looking at how mobile can and devices can be used with the learning and development um, scenarios of the future. We'll be looking for mobile operators to participate in these groups, but we'll be also looking to reach out to some of the key stakeholders we've developed over the last three years in those ecosystems. And those working groups or those special interest groups, as we call them, they'll be very much focused on really being um, a place where we can gather requirements and we can disseminate the messages of the program in the future. So I think that, uh, I'm hoping that's given you a very broad overview of the, the focus and scope of the program. Um, obviously, more detail is available and you'll have all of those contact details available to you at the end of this, um, this webinar. I'd like to also take this opportunity to remind you that if you do have any questions, the contact details for this webinar are actually on the bottom left of, your, of the, the slides that you're actually seeing at the moment. And with that, I'd like to hand over to Sylvia who will give us a, some analysis of the, the market as we see it at the moment and maybe some of the big key trends that we could see coming up in the future. Thank Thanks. you, Rich. My name is, uh, my name is Sylvia Kichis and I work at the team of um, at GSMA Intelligence. Um, we are the research arm of GSMA Association. Over the past year and a half, um, my role has been to understand what mobile operators are doing within the M2M ecosystem. So we have started off our adventure and our understanding of M2M identifying which operators are offering M2M. This is the slide um, Graham showed at the beginning of the presentation. So which operators in which countries are offering M2M services, be it as an end-to-end -end solution, um, M2M um, tariff, or simple data plan that's being used for, for M2M service. Um, what we've done next, we have spoken to almost 100 players uh, within the M2M ecosystem, trying to understand what is it that they are doing, um, whether they are trying to provide end-to-end -end solutions, whether it's just partnering uh, to, to offer uh, simple venue contracting, what is the role and what are they trying to do um, to address um, the M2M opportunity. Based on the conversations that, that we had and based on the data we have collected, we have uh, produced a um, M2M market size, which we have published um, this year um, at Barcelona. 
So I do invite you to go and download from DSM Intelligence uh, website our report that is for free uh, called End-to-End -end State of the Industry where you can find some of the data that we are presenting uh, today but also the insights um, from the interviews we had carried out um, over the course of a couple of months. So moving um, to the slides about the global size of end to end market. Um, at the end of year 2013, we estimate that there were 195 million uh, end to end connections globally. Uh, this is a growth of almost 40% uh, year on year. What we have seen over the past couple of years is the majority of the growth has come from the developing countries. Um, the majority of growth is coming from China. China is a big market overall uh, in terms of mobile connections, but uh, there's been a lot of development, partially because of the involvement of Chinese government uh, in, in IoT, and China has grown to become the, the largest end-to-end -end country in the world. Um, However, even the number, um, even though the number is growing, it is important to remember that M2M connections account for only 2.8% of total uh, mobile connections. This, this, is a, this is an improvement over the 2010 um, figure of 1.4%. Nonetheless, there is still a, a big way to go for operators. If we, if we compare how this proportion looks across uh, different regions, the highest uh, proportion of, of M2M um, over total connections comes from North America, which is where it's almost 10%, uh, followed by Europe of 5% of total um, uh, connections are M2M, and then Asia at 2.1. If we can move on to the next slide, um, we can look at how uh, M2M connections are broken down by different regions. Um, in here, you, you will see that Asia is the largest m market, accounting for 42% of overall m connections, uh, follow, followed by Europe by, uh, with 27, uh, 28% um, in 2013. Asia has also recorded the largest net additions over uh, the 2010-2013 period with almost 55 million m m connections added. As I mentioned uh, before, China has, has led um, the market recently, and China alone almost added 42 million connections um, in, in at the same period. Um, and then there are additional markets that have been growing quite rapidly, um, also in Asia. Japan added 40 to 49 million, uh, India 1.6, and South Korea uh, 1.3. If we can move on to, on to the next slide, please. Thank you. And um, the message <laughs> is still the same. Uh, China is the largest, uh, the, the largest market, but only 10 countries at the moment uh, account for 70% of our overall connections. Um, here we can see the breakdown uh, with, with China accounting for almost 30%, uh, US 16, followed by Japan, Brazil, France, and, and Italy. What is, what is important to note is that in 2012, China overtook U.S. as, as the largest um, M2M uh, country, and China and U.S. together um, account for 44% of all connections. Um, when, we, when we look at other leading countries um, in, in Asia, because I'm guessing that the majority of um, participants at the moment are coming from Asia, um, Japan has been growing quite, quite rapidly uh, in the past year from 7.8 million in 2013 to 9.2 in 2018. And quite interestingly, India, uh, we've seen quite a lot of growth coming from India uh, from 1.2 to 2 million. We, based on the conversations I had with operators, um, there is even more happening in India at the moment with um, developments happening in the automotive and, and smart metering uh, industries. If we can move on um, to the next, next slide. Um, as I mentioned before, we're constantly talking to operators, trying to understand what it is uh, that they are doing within M2M. And based on the conversations that we are having, um, they are trying to move beyond providing connectivity only. Um, M2M, average revenue per connection, it is in, in a very low single uh, dollar uh, value. But if operators are adding additional services on top of that, this revenue can increase significantly. 
Uh, here we have an example of, of KP and what KP has done with um, the service called TaxiCell. Recently, I've been at the M21 World Congress conference where um, Perkso um, shared with us what they have done um, to increase the revenue coming uh, from, from M21 collections, saying that for any additional service that they're offering on top of basic vehicle tracking and they're going to advance one when they start offering insurance telematics, they can add additional $12 on top of that. So obviously there is a way for operators to improve the revenue they're getting, uh, getting from, um, from the M21 connections. The way they do it, there are multiple ways, as, as we have heard, is either they try to build uh, end-to-end uh, solutions, as we've seen this happening in the US with uh, Verizon requiring huge telematics, or they partnering um, partnerships, not only between operators um, in, in form of end-to-end -end, uh, alliances that are for the roaming purposes, but also alliances between operators and um, solution providers are, are more common because operators might not have all the knowledge in-house to develop end-to-end -end solutions, but if they partner with the right partners, be it fleet management uh, solutions or, or um, recently we've seen Telefonica uh, signing a deal with uh, GC Decor uh, of AT&T um, entering the connected uh, car space, th there is a space for them to improve and, and, and gain additional um, revenues from that. Um, this is all for me. Please, I do invite you if, if there's anything else you would like to know or if there's anything you would like to share about the countries that you operate in, I'll be happy to talk to you and discuss um, what is this that you are doing within the M2M space and, and um, if, if you're interested to hear more about any other business cases from more developed market, I'll be happy to talk to you. I'm handing over to Andrew. Thank you very much, Sylvia, for the <coughs> excellent presentation on the market opportunity. Um, <coughs> um, my name is Andrew Parker. I uh, look after the uh, marketing activities for the Connected Living Program. And uh, today I'd like to take just five minutes to go through three key aspects of marketing uh, activities of the Connected Living Program. Firstly, I'd like to talk about the marketing communications aspects of the program. Secondly, I'd like to talk about showcasing technology and opportunities to demonstrate uh, at market to the market uh, new technology and services and thirdly I'd like to cover our events and how to get involved in events and uh, our plans for the next um, six months. Firstly um, I'd like to cover the marketing uh, communications activity. The marketing communications activity has two main purposes. The first one is to communicate all the deliverables of the program to make it absolutely clear uh, what we've achieved and how the market's changing. And secondly, to keep you informed of the latest aspects on the M2M and IoT markets. If we can fulfill those two purposes, then we can communicate um, the big opportunity in the development in the space. And some particular examples of marketing communications activity which form part of the Connected Living Program. First one is the market tracker. Now the market tracker can be found on the Connected Living website. And this is a, a very valuable tool indeed, which tracks global deployments of M2M and IoT services around the world. Currently, it's the largest tracker in the world in this space, and we cover 2,150 uh, deployments around the world. Essentially, what you can see is you can see good practice developed around the world and see new services that are deployed in different markets. It's a very valuable tool when you're looking at your own market for ideas and opportunities. The second area is very important is case studies and technology roadmaps. Now this is really detailed information uh, about guides for developments and examples of how different operators have, have actually deployed um, technology around the world. And here it's very useful again for detail in particular areas of the market. For example, we have an M Automotive uh, technology uh, roadmap, which is a very detailed uh, description of all the aspects of uh, deployment requirements for M2M in the M automotive space. A third area is position papers, and we cover quite a lot of these, which is about what our view of the market is and represent what our members feel about the market going forward. Um, and also we show opportunity 
And I think it's very important to show the market and government opportunity of the market around the world. So, for example, um, on, in the, uh, recently we produced a socio-economic impact, which effectively showed the positive impact of M2M and IoT technology. And we covered that globally and regionally in Asia. Fourthly, uh, we, we present a lot of slide decks and messaging tools. Now, these messaging tools are very important because they ha allow us to show the industry positions and provide you with the toolkit you need to present those po positions around the world. And following on from that, we do a lot of media and analyst briefings. So this is effectively about talking to the market, talking to the media, and making sure that we're communicating the industry position in the marketplace. And finally, we do produce a number of video and multimedia productions where they're appropriate to demonstrate the value of the technology. A particular area here, for example, is the value of embedded SIM. And what we try and do here is bring the opportunity and uh, what embedded SIM can bring to the market and develop that through multimedia to help communicate the power of embedded SIM. The second area I'd like to talk about today is our events uh, program. And the events are very important for us because uh, this year particularly, it's about engagement, engagement with the market. And we have a number of opportunities uh, at events. Now, we're a, a couple of events I'd like to talk about. Uh, we have a big event in Shanghai at uh, Mobile Asia Expo in June this year. And, um, and there we'll be having a full program of activity, uh, including a workshop, a full one-day workshop on details of the Connected Living program. And in that, in that workshop, we will be discussing and uh, talking about the program, our achievements, and getting insights from the region in the workshop. So it's all about engagement. Other aspects, um, we have, uh, we'll have a workshop in Atlanta in September. Um, again, we'll be using that as an opportunity to communicate uh, achievements of the program and also get feedback and involvement from regional players. Um, on uh, other aspects, uh, we obviously will culminate the year at Mobile um, uh, World Congress in Barcelona in March this year, slightly later. And there we will be uh, present presenting a series of seminars on, um, on the Connected Living program, something we've done very successfully over the last couple of years. And the seminar programs are quite exhaustive, and they are big, uh, effectively deep dives on aspects of the program. So there's a chance for involvement and communication of what the program is actually doing. So those are the events and uh, the communication opportunities um, around the world. And finally, I'd like to talk today a little bit about showcasing technology, which I think is very important to the program and very important to communicate to the marketplace. So this allow, we, all we do is uh, uh, offer platforms for members and, and yourselves to demonstrate new services and devices in this space. So a key aspect of that is uh, what we call the Connected City. And we have Connected Cities planned for Shanghai this year and Barcelona in March. And the Connected City is essentially a, a showcase for M2M and IoT. And here, I'd like to invite you to provide ideas and, and um, new technology to demonstrate within the connected city. And uh, to give you some idea of the power of the cities, um, the cities are central to um, both uh, Mobile Asia Expo and to Mobile World Congress. At Mobile World Congress this year, we had over 18,000 visitors to the connected city, a 20% increase on last year, which is a great uh, indicator of the power and the interest in this marketplace. So my request to you and opportunity is to provide technology uh, for the connected city. And what we ask in return are um, innovative demonstrations of M2M and IoT technology and engaging uh, demonstrations and also supporters. So what we'd like to do is offer you the platform and you provide us with uh, demonstrations to show the world new areas in M2M and IoT and support those at Connected Cities. So the final request is that all this information is available on InfoCenter 2 and also on the Connected Living website, which is gsma.com forward slash connected living. 
So please go to the website where you'll find all the details on our marketing communication so you can download all the documents I've discussed, events information from our events calendar, and thirdly, information about the connected city and how you can provide demonstrations of technology to the marketplace. Um, well, thank you for your attention today. And now I'd like to hand over to Graham, who will be talking to you more about how to get involved in the program. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah. Very detailed, thank you. Very good. Um, I'd just like to remind everybody that we are live in sunny London here, and um, we're able and willing to take your questions over the next few minutes. So remember the hashtag CLWeb and also the email address connectedliving at gsma.com. So please uh, send your questions in now, and we'll try and deal with them live. And I'd like to thank you for continuing to watch and stay connected to this webinar. Uh, I guess my task here to uh, summarize this really is, is how you get involved. Hopefully you're interested. If you're still watching, I suspect you are interested. And you now need to know how to be involved with the program. So I think there are several levels. If you want to be engaged and you want to be part of the operator group that helps deliver the deliverables towards the objectives that we've stated, then you'll see the four pillars on the current slide and you'll see in the red boxes towards the bottom of the page um, the name of the primary contact in my team that you could contact and send an email to. So please do send an email to one or more of them uh, explaining your interest, your level of interest, your role within the company and uh, how you think you can contribute to those uh, objectives. That would be really helpful. I think if you want to be involved in any of the special interest groups which are looking at particular verticals, and we will have a number of those as, as Richard explained earlier on, then please also send an email to uh, connectedliving at gsma.com letting us know uh, which ones you're interested in and we'll make sure you're connecting to that. If you just want sort of a general understanding of how the program is going and you don't want to be actually involved in day to day but you want to you know, understand how we're getting on and see some of the outputs, then we have formed what we call a global interest group. Uh, this is something that all the programs in the GSMA provide, and that's a, a, an interest group which will be a mailing list. We can send out uh, regular pieces of information, and we'll also run webinars like this um, probably two or three times a year to get people updated on how the program's going. So again, uh, if you'd like to, um, connect to that one, there is an InfoCenter 2 address on the page for those of you on InfoCenter, or again, you can use connectedliving at gsma.com. So we're really looking for people that want to participate and actively contribute to the program. I do encourage you to get in contact with the key people, primary contacts on there, but if you're unsure who to send to, then please just send a detailed message to the main connectedliving at gsma.com mailing list. So uh, thank you for your attention. I'll hand over to Richard, who's going to try and manage a question and answer session. I will do my best. And um, thanks very much, everybody, for the de detailed information that you've shared on the webinar today. So can I just remind everybody, we do have a unique opportunity with um, um, the team here to, to ask your questions. So please do use the hashtag and uh, email address. So we've actually got some questions in already. Um, so I think my first question is probably for Sylvia. Um, we're really looking, there's a question around what do you expect the big changes to be within this space here over the next year or so? Um, as I mentioned before, operators are looking to move beyond providing connectivity only. Um, and we've seen an increasing number of partnerships. Um, that's, that's pretty much the, the flavor of, of, of the year, partnerships, be it uh, Global Bridge Alliance, uh, alliances between operators, partnerships between operators and, and on-prem uh, platform vendors. So I think uh, as operators are becoming curious about and to um, the partnerships are becoming more, more increasing. Okay, thank you very much. And we've got another question from an operator in the Middle East and he's just asking, I think this one's for, for Andrew, you know, what kind of technology demonstrators are you looking to see on the connected city? Obviously this is a great opportunity to showcase real life examples of this technology, but what is it you'd like to see? <coughs> for us, the, the ideal uh, demonstrations are ones that show the power of the mobile network and, and devices on the mobile network. And they're innovative, they're, they're new, they haven't got to be far out there. We, we prefer the ones that have just been launched or are literally about to be launched because it's not a tomorrow's world type demonstration. It's about the market developing today, but it's showing people the power of M2M and IoT. 
also, we like, to, like demonstrations with a good business model behind them because I think it's very important with a business audience, people have to see where the opportunity is in the marketplace. So it's business model and it's also engagement. Um, demonstrations, that, uh, particularly for events that are just screen-based, aren't particularly exciting and interesting. Screens are clearly part of a demonstration, but they mustn't be the whole part of the demonstration. For example, at Barcelona this year, we were showing um, connected cars, which people could fit in and experience. We were showing um, uh, wearables, which would be basketball players showing biometrics being delivered to smartphones. And we showed thing, even the connected toothbrush, which showed how um, M2M and IoT technology is beginning to come into the home. So for us, it's, it's a wide variety of opportunity, but for, for partners here, it's, it's a good opportunity to show your new services and devices to the world. Question. It's quite a simple one. In terms of how should the participants in the webinar contact us if they have a good, unique idea that they'd like to showcase at one of our events? Uh, the best way is to to send us an email at uh, connected uh, gsma.com. Basically, connectedliving at gsma.com. It's basically send us an email. The email address is on the front. Provide that. We'll look at every email that comes in, and we'll get back to you on all demonstration opportunities. Okay, fantastic. I think, Graham, the next question is for you, and it's, it's from an operator in China. And what they're really keen to understand is, you know, we've got this slide that we just saw about how to get involved. We saw some dates around the next meetings, but how often does the program meet? Is there, is there a program level meeting? And, you know, how, what's the frequency? Well, th it's, it's a very good question. And of course, as you mentioned, in China, we have uh, operators and indeed there will be other people in the value chain involved from all the way around the world. So, you know, it's not always possible to have face-to-face uh, -face meetings, but we are trying to schedule face-to-face -face meetings so that those people in countries where visas are required, for example, uh, can actually go through that process and get a visa to attend. So I think there will be a combination. For the individual pillars that you saw, there will be uh, probably monthly meetings, mostly teleconference, I think, or maybe webinars like this in some cases too, uh, or WebEx conference calls. Uh, we will try in each case to have some face-to-face uh, -face meetings. We will try to use industry events to base those face-to-face -face meetings around to minimize travel for people. Um, we also, from a governance point of view, have uh, a quarterly um, high-level governance meeting program leadership group uh, that will meet at some of our major events and also some additional places and we have a monthly program execution team meeting. So actually there won't be short of meetings. The challenge is trying to get everybody hooked up to the right thing. And I'm conscious that everybody's time is, is precious and they can't necessarily be involved in everything. So I think we need to help um, by understanding, if you can help us by explaining your interest and your areas of interest, then we'll get you plugged into the right group where you can contribute and to make sure that you understand when the meetings are and where they are. Okay, fantastic, Graham. Well, I think the next question's for me and it's asking what the major achievements were of the programme last year. And as I said, the programme last year was very much focused on market development. And we built a lot of strong relationships across the world with trying to advocate the use of mobile within adjacent ecosystems. And, and we tried to build a bridge between the mobile community and also governments and regulators around the world so we can actually get some real support for these products and services and, and start to have access to potential revenue streams that, 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 that weren't available to mobile operators in the future. So just to give some real live case examples of what the program did, we worked with the, the mobile operators in the Philippines, we brought all of the, the, the group together. And we actually worked with them um, to develop an opportunity within a government program where the government would endorse the use of mobile technologies and obviously reimburse um, the mobile operators for being able to deliver education opportunities to um, out-of-school use um, across the Philippines. In the Middle East, we worked very closely with the cities of Dubai in terms of um, helping and feeding into their plans for their smart cities. And also, we worked in the UAE around health and unlocking the opportunity of healthcare. One of the big challenges is in health is gaining regulator and government support. And we, and we recently saw, working with the operators, an MOU signed between both of the operators in the UAE and also the Ministry of Health. We've also done some innovative 
um, demonstrations. So we ran a um, bike ride across um, Europe from Brussels to Barcelona, where all of the um, participants were connected 24 seven to blood glucose meters. We had a hosted platform which was showcasing real, real time information regarding not only the um, tele telemetry, can't even say the word, of, um, um, of the speed they were moving at or the, um, the pedal power that they had, but also looking at real life um, readings of their blood glucose um, as they were participating in the ride and they were resting. So we've got a whole host of examples of where we were starting to see uh, mobile technologies moving into those ecosystems. And please do visit the GSMA website to gain more information about that. So I think I've got one more question, looking at the time that I've um, and the questions I've received so far. Um, Sylvia, in terms of if um, participants in this webinar want to find out more around the information that you've, you've given today, how is it best for them to to find that information? So we're currently working on adding the Emperor module to GSMA intelligence, uh, but I would invite to contact them, uh, contact them directly through me at s kechish, K-E-C-H-I-C-H-E-H-G at stem.com. I'm trying to remember, yes, but my surname correctly. So s kechish at gsma.com uh, and I will, I will try to, to get the information that you mentioned and talk to them about it. Fantastic. And Andrew, in terms of after this webinar, in terms of distribution of the slides, how people can stay in touch going forward, might, you know, maybe from a more light touch perspective, is there any, any yes, ways I mean, that the they The key to this, uh, after this event, we will be distributing a link to everyone who participated in today's uh, event. And on that link, that will take you to the website. And then from the website, you can download all the presentation slides we're given today, all the contact details, and so you can see who to contact, how to contact them, and find more about the, uh, the, the program. So after this uh, today, we'll distribute that all to you here. And uh, please, once you see this link, please let us know what you think, because we're very, very keen to get feedback from our audience, uh, because uh, we live to serve the members, and you are the members, so please let us know what you think of this webinar, the program, give us some feedback, and we will respond to everything we receive. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much. Well, I think that's all of the questions that we've had. I'd just like to thank everybody for the time that they've taken to join us on this webinar, and I hope you found it informative. I think if you require any more information, then please do visit the GSMA website or the Info Center if you have access to that to gain more active involvement within the program. And I think it's just very much, it just leaves me to say that um, I very much look forward to working with you all in the future if you see this as an opportunity that you'd like to take forward. And thank you. And thank you to the panel.